oh, thank goodness my mum, when she moved out, left the coffee machine. She's not leaving it permanently, unfortunately, but at least for a few days, I can actually wake up. You know an amazing thing about Teslas? I've owned this car for eight years. I never knew that it could tell me when the the, the washer fluid was low. I, I mean, I, I guess it must have always had the sensors in there. And maybe it took an update to sort of actually make use of that. Or maybe I just never let the washer fluid run too low. But I love the fact that it tells me. That is really clever. But anyway, I'm going to fill that up now. Took the whole thing virtually. And then it's time for more coffee. More coffee. Also, my brother's got a Starlink, a roaming Starlink, which is so awesome. I'm gonna have to do a review with that at some point as well. I literally, he ordered it, two days later it turned up. Fantastic. I just, I wish I had an excuse for getting one. Maybe I need to think of a, a way to have an excuse because I would love that. I mean, he's got better broadband now from his van at the top of a mountain than we have in our house. I guess that's that village life for you. <laughs> okay, I'm just about to go out and we, we, my mum's got a storage unit that I, I put a bunch of stuff in, my brother put some stuff in, she put some stuff in, and now her house is finished. It's ridiculous to have a storage unit with a bunch of stuff in. So, I am just have to go and, and get that emptied now. So that is the next job on, um, on today's list. Uh, I've already done some editing, got my daily vlog edited and it's uploading now whilst I do this. So, yeah. I'm gonna crack on and then I wanted to talk about lithium and is there enough for all the EVs we want to create can we do it for Carlo gin and I've made extensive use of the keep climate on because I'm only ever out of the car for five ten minutes and it's amazing how hot it gets in that time and then you know the climate control has to work extra hard to get it cool again so you know anyway I've only used like 35 miles so far and this is literally the fourth trip to storage we're almost done and then i can talk about this um this lithium situation just firstly from without doing any particular research into it i'm given to understand there's plenty of lithium the lithium is a fairly abundant element in the earth's crust the question is how much of that is actually reasonably extractable and i, I think also another big point about lithium is that unlike digging oil out of the ground, which is also terrible for the environment, but then you burn it and it's gone. The carbon ends up in the atmosphere. You, you know, if you're gonna use it again, you've got to get the carbon back out of the atmosphere, which means you have to add energy. It's possible, but it's uh, not like with lithium where you put it into a battery and then yes, you might have to refine and, and reprocess those materials to, you know, be able to make a new batteries when they reach the end of their life. But, for the most part, you know, it's a, it can be a relatively closed cycle thing. Anyway, there's my mum. I'm gonna help load her car and my car and we're hoping this will be the last trip or maybe the second to last, we'll see. Ah, my mum kindly got me some lunch, so I'm just having a quick pit stop. So nice and cool. I don't know how people live in cars where you can't keep the air con with that on without having the engine running. I guess they just leave the engine running, but that always seems like ridiculously wasteful to me. What do you think, Mum? Uh, do you need the engine running? Yes. See? My back Environmental hurts. terrorism. No, I don't actually. I just get hot. <laughs> and don't like it. Well, I, look, I'm being really naughty. I'm actually putting the, the climate keeper on. So when I get back to the car, it'll still be this temperature. <laughs> yep. I live in that EV dream. I'm so hot and so tired but the storage unit is empty. We've done it. And it only took like five trips, so yay. Anyway, so when you look up the future of, of lithium, um, you know, mining and stuff like that, I'm not a massive fan of taking more out of the earth than you need. Luckily, this is a resource that isn't consumed, so it is recoverable. I think governments in particular need to try and get ahead of the curve on this. Otherwise, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up having loads and loads of lithium just buried in landfill. And then at some point, people are going to start thinking, ah, uh, we actually want that lithium back. 
you know, or they might do. Or they'll think, no, we don't want that lithium back. It'll be easier to just destroy some part of Chile or, you know, Australia in an effort to mine more lithium. And that is definitely to be avoided. And then we get to the, the point that I think is probably the most likely future for all this. And that is, oddly enough, not lithium at all. You see, there's so much money in batteries now because of electric vehicles and the growth that that industry is going through and also there will be electric aircraft as well down the line and they will also require big batteries you'll have electric ships to some extent you already do and they need massive batteries trains which get their power from overhead lines but then they can carry a battery so that they can cross areas without the overhead lines for example, save a bit of money on uh, infrastructure there. Actually, people have pro proposed similar things to that for roads as well, actually. But the point is, with this much investment in it, if you could find a way to make a battery that worked as well or better than a lithium-ion battery and didn't require lithium, then it'd be like a license to print your own money. So there's a lot of people out there you know, a lot of very large organizations actively hunting for that next generation battery or a solid state battery, which doesn't require the recycling. So you save all the energy on that. In other words, promoting the, the use of lithium ion batteries and encouraging that industry, if it's done in a reasonably thoughtful way, can be a huge positive. Wow, hay fever is actually starting to like knock me out a bit now. Yeah, I'm I'm generally quite hopeful about things, but I definitely think that it's not a, it's not the barrier that some people would have you believe. And I think a lot of people kind of almost want it to be a barrier because they actually just want the status quo to, to continue. And it would be possible for, you know, there is a way that we could do that. We could carry on burning, you know, hydrocarbons and have that be a, a zero carbon activity. Sounds like you couldn't do that, but you can. What you have to do is you have to use, you have to create methane out of the atmosphere. I believe it's called the Sabatier process. Um, they're gonna need to use that on Mars to make rocket propellant. So the technology to do that at scale and efficiently is probably coming. And if you do that, powered by renewable energy, you know, solar panels, wind, that kind of thing, geothermal, nuclear even, then you have a supply of fuel, which although it'll put out carbon dioxide at the point of use, it will take in carbon dioxide at the point of generation. And the amount it takes in will be exactly the same as the amount that goes out. So it'll be zero carbon. And we could do that. The problem with anything like that, and this is actually also the problem with hydrogen as well, is that it's cheaper to just dig it out the ground. So, that's what companies do and they lobby governments to make sure that governments feel that that is acceptable and that's why when you actually look at the hydrogen market for example a enormous vast majority of the hydrogen that is used i think it's something like 95 percent actually comes from methane basically it's a, a byproduct of that so in other words it's a fossil fuel you might not end up with the carbon in your vehicle but the carbon is taken out the ground and burnt by somebody nonetheless yet again i just it's not a good idea you'd need government to legislate and the incredibly powerful energy lobbies are going to fight that tooth and nail because it's going to damage their bottom line hugely so i i think it's you know the the way forwards is i think it's i'm 100 percent sure the way forwards is batteries but i think long term probably not lithium ion batteries sodium ion batteries for example they're showing some promise uh, at the moment so hopefully that can that can happen aluminium actually holds a huge amount of power you know i think there was talk a while ago of an aluminium air battery if i remember correctly it was single use but it held like some huge amount of power like a car with a lit, lit, um, aluminium air battery could do like 2000 miles or something so wow um, you know, there's loads and loads of potential out there. When it comes to charging up your battery, quite often renewable sources of energy are extremely competitive with other energy sources for, you know, for, for that charging. 
um, in a way that isn't the case with hydrogen, for example. So yeah, I just, I'm, I don't know, I'm always ragging on hydrogen. It's, I don't think it's a goer. Anyway, I'm gonna call today's proceedings to a close now and go have a run and get my hair cut and get on with some editing, so that's fine. I hope you've all enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you like, links in the description. And I'll say a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters because you guys are awesome. And I'll see you all in the next episode of my daily vlog. Bye.